Good evening. Welcome to the second episode of Live with the Librarians. To begin, I would like to acknowledge the peoples of the Kulin Nation, being the traditional, traditional custodians of the land uh, on which we are recording and on which Wyndham is being built. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. My name is Kirsty, and I am here tonight for the second episode of Live with the Librarians with my colleagues Gary, Anu, and Jess. We will be talking about a book that we are currently reading, a book that we've finished reading, and something we're looking forward to. Hopefully this will give you a bit of an idea of something you'd like to read yourself. And at the end of uh, our discussion, we'll be opening uh, up for questions and comments. So please send everything through and I'll be checking at the end. So I think I will start with Gary. What have you been reading recently? Okay, so the one that, uh, one that I'm currently reading uh, is this one. It's called At the Wolf's Table. Um, it's, a, it's the fourth novel by Rosella Postorino, um, an Italian author. Uh, the first of her books has been translated into English um, and it follows the main character um, Rosa Sauer who's um, a German lady in uh, mid-twenties, 26 year old German from Berlin uh, and it's set during the Second World War. Um, so it takes place in 1943 um, and uh, she's a married lady um, and her husband Gregor, they've been married for four years, but her husband Gregor's signed up for uh, the military and he's gone off to the Russian front, or the German front to fight Russia. And because she's got no family of her own, she's gone to stay with his um, parents uh, in the country. Um, and it's there that her story really starts because while she's there, she gets a visit from the German SS um, and they essentially conscript her to, into a position for um, the SS um, where she suddenly becomes one of 15 women who um, are taken to, um, and it's, if, if there's any, any German uh, speaking people watching, forgive me for this, but it's called uh, the Wolf's Chance, um, which is the Wolf's Lair. In that German, Hitler is oh. Hitler. The Führer was known by the SS uh, as the Wolf. Okay. So this, so the Wolf Chance was one of his um, secret headquarters mm -hmm. during the during the Second World War. Um, so Rosa Sauer becomes one of fifteen ladies um, that travels twice a day mm -hmm. to the Wolf Chance in order to be one of Hitler's food tasters. Oh. oh wow, okay. Mm. So Hitler was notorious um, for being afraid of being poisoned oh, by okay. the Allies. Right. And so um, you know, they conscript these young women, some of whom are married, some of whom are single, um, some of whom are um, fully behind the Fuhrer. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they get known in the book as the fanatics, mm -hmm. and some of whom say they're not for the Nazi party at yeah. all, you know, they don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there they are eating Nazi food. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, well, it would be a dangerous thing to to refuse. Yeah, that's mm. true. That's it, yeah. they can't refuse. Yeah. Yeah. They can't yeah. refuse, can yeah. they? That's the yeah. thing, you know. And how was she chosen? Like, um, um, So she was chosen... Well, this is actually, this is actually based on a true story. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So the real lady was called Margaret Volk, oh, W-L-K. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and she was the only survivor, actually, uh, of the 15 after the war. Wow. Um, and she, in her uh, sort of biography, she says that she was chosen by the mayor of this uh, little rural town. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And so, as I say, they travel twice a day mm -hmm. to this wolf's chance and then back home again. Mm -hmm. But every time they eat a meal, mm -hmm. and it's high quality food, of mm -hmm. course, it's the fewest food, um, so they eat this meal, and then for an hour afterwards, mm -hmm. they just have to sit and wait. Yeah. Oh, okay. Waiting to see whether see there's, there's any, any poison. Yeah. <laughs> so yep. if not, mm -hmm. they go home. Wow, that's really interesting. That day, they get brought back mm -hmm. again. Yeah. And it's a fantastic story, you know, and it's told against the backdrop of, you know, a husband at the front. He doesn't know what's going on. He thinks she's safe with his parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, there's these two factions um, 
you know, act actually at the Wolf Chance itself, you know, some are for Hitler, some are not. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm only um, about a third of the way into the book, so it's obviously going to develop a little bit more with her mm -hmm. relationship yeah. with the SS officers and bits mm -hmm. and pieces. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, fascinating story. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, it sounds really yeah. great. Yeah, so it sounds far. very interesting. Very, yeah. very interesting. And to think that it's based on a true story as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, that's Incredible. Yeah. As I say, so she was the only lady after. I think her story came out when she was 95, the real lady behind this. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's the one remaining person from all the other 15. So wow. fascinating. Yeah. The, others, mm -hmm. the others got rounded up by the Russians okay. and ex you know, executed. Mm -hmm. So she was the one survivor. And she mm -hmm. only told her story when she was 95. So yeah, so if you get a chance to read this one, um, Rosella Posterino at The Wolf's Table. Mm -hmm. And it was published uh, in Australia this year. So it's a new, new story. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Anu, what have what have you been reading yes. recently? So I'm I'm currently reading two books. By reading, I mean I'm reading this this book, Milkman by Anna Burns, and I'm listening to the audio of John Christian's The Reckoning. So both books are like poles apart. Uh, but you know, um, I find it much more easier to follow one story while I'm driving, yeah. and uh, you know, when I'm sitting <coughs> down and when I have time, I like to read uh, the physical copy of a book. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, John Christian, I, I'm like much further onto this uh, book, The Reckoning. Uh, it's it's a very intriguing uh, story. It's full of suspense, and um, uh, it talks about uh, a, a decorated war hero, Pete Banning. Uh, he returns uh, to his um, uh, state, Mississippi. He lives in a place called Clanton, and um, he is a rich farmer. And uh, after he returns, I think after a couple of months, um, he, the, the story begins with him deciding one day to do something really um, like out of the ordinary. You know that something bad is going to happen, something sinister yeah. is going to happen, but uh, he's getting prepared for something and you know that um, he is a good guy from his thoughts um, and what he thinks and he prepares well in advance before doing a deed. And the suspense, um, uh, the, it, it's, it, the first chapter itself, it's revealed that, you know, he goes and murders, the he sh shoots the um, you know, pastor of the oh. Methodist church oh. that he's also a member of. Yeah. So it begins like that. It begins with a bang, mm. and um, then so the so there's no mystery in there. So the whole book revolves around the fact uh, or the or the question of why did yeah. such a man, a mm. hero, and who is like well off and who's having a good life would do such a deed. So the, mm. the whole book revolves around that. Mm. And I've only reached the first part of the book. And I read yeah. the review. And it says that the book is divided into three parts. And the first part says uh, uh, it, it is about the trial of Pete Banning. Yeah. And uh, uh, so typical of a John Grisham book, it has got a lot of legal um, terminology, courtroom scenes. And it's not boring. It's very well written. And you know, it's, it's full of um, um, suspense because Pete refuses uh, to reveal the reason for his murder, and um, uh, be because of that, he is uh, like he would be sentenced. You know, he would mm, be given yeah. a harsh punishment. He mm. he understands that, and he's ready to go with that. And in the second part of the book, I didn't read it, but I read the reviews, and I know that it, it in the second part it talks about his military past uh, and oh, okay. his actions and how brave a um, um, officer he was, etc. And the third part mostly talks about his family. So he has got a wife, and in in strange circumstances, like she is in a mental asylum. Oh. So we are not um, uh, revealed the reason why she is in the asylum. And he's got two kids. Uh, mm. They are both grown up, and mm. they are studying in universities. And mm. so the third part is about how the kids uh, find out the truth behind and how the. It affects Oh. Yeah, how it affects them. Yeah, right. it, it really. I I think it, it's it's going to affect them in a really bad way. I I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So the first part, I really enjoyed it because uh, I, I you know some books like when you read the first or or second page, you mm. feel that you are into the book and you want to know what is going to happen. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so this is that kind of a book. It's a real thriller. So you'll be listening to that on the way home. Yeah, on the <laughs> way home <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. 
But this is a different kind of book, Milkman. So this um, is a uh, total, if this is a thriller, I would say this is a kind of realistic literary fiction. Yeah. 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 So it's it won. It's an award winner, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It won the tw 2018 Booker Prize. Mm. And um, so it's a, uh, this is the kind of book that I've never, ever read so far in the sense that uh, no characters have got any names. So oh wow! Oh, yeah, okay. okay. So I've never read any book like that, and it's yeah. it's kind of hard to follow in mm -hmm. the beginning because uh, the the ma the main person is I, the, mm -hmm. it's in yeah. first person narrative, and then um, it goes uh, like um, sister, the all the other characters, the sister, middle sisters, husband. It goes like that, okay. and uh, yeah, I f I it is I think it is based on something that happened in Northern Ireland, the troubles there, mm -hmm. uh, but no place or anything is specified so far. And oh. the title Milkman stands for a very influential political figure uh. yeah, who takes an interest in this particular young person who is the, who is the protagonist of this story. And uh, she is afraid of him and uh, because she is, uh, th there are scandals and rumors in the society um, about these two people because he follows her around and you know because of uh, his proximity um, you know she gets the people are afraid of her and at the same time respect her yeah I've, n I've mm. not gone much into the story yeah. mm -hmm. this is the kind of book I feel you know it takes patience to read it mm. yeah. Yeah. because yeah so you, but when you start reading it you find um, you know I, I, I don't know where this is going you can't mm. relate to it but the more you read it you can understand it better uh, because it's written in a uh, stream of consciousness style uh, so okay. you get to know of yeah. all yeah. the characters, thoughts. Yeah, I mean, uh, and it's 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 got a undercurrent of feminism as well. Could mm. I ask what's uh, what's the relevance of not revealing the names? Is did, did, did you? Uh, did yeah, you, did I you really didn't there? figure it out so far, okay. yeah. but mm. it is kind of interesting. That's all I can mm. say. Mm. Have uh, you yeah. gotten far enough in that the style is? like starting to settle and it's getting a bit yeah, easier. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I have read like probably um, like a quarter of the book mm -hmm. and now I, I it's kind of singing in now. Yeah, it was kind of hard to begin with, mm. but now mm. I can follow it a little more better. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Just Sounds a good. A word yeah. with the format. Yeah. Um, do you find that when you're listening to um, titles on audio, yeah compared to when you're taking time to actually sit down and read, do you find that you tend to go for a particular style of book on audiobook, like something like a thriller okay. or... or mm. um, uh, yeah, I understood what you meant. Yeah, yeah, something more like to relax for a hard copy. Yeah, I haven't... Uh, yeah, mo mostly it is thrillers or autobiographies that I mm. listen to while I drive. Mm. and. Um, I, I find that listening to audiobooks is like um, I, I get into the space more quickly mm. than when I'm reading a book. Mm. I don't know, probably it's just me, mm. but I feel that because um, I shut everything on me and you know, mm. I, I'm, I'm like, I can imagine things in a better mm. way. Only if the narrator is really good. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Can, yeah. That can make a huge Do difference. you get home faster when you're listening to a film? <laughs> <laughs> Listening to a thriller. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm, I, I definitely don't want to switch the car off. You know, yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, sit, yeah. In the, sit in your driveway yes. listening yes. for a while. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. It works <laughs> well for you know busy lifestyles. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, now we all know your secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and Jess, what have you been reading? Um. So I have just. Um, I won't say just started because I've sort of picked, uh, I've got uh, Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. Um, I picked this one up and put it down and I haven't quite gotten all the way through it. Um, so it's a book of poetry. Um, it deals with um, trauma and working your way through trauma and it's um, broken up into chapters. I originally picked it up because um, there was a lot of hype around it, a lot of people um, it's one of those things that um, some people either really love it or they really don't like it. And I sort of wanted to see why, what is mm. it doing that, mm. that is, um, you know, mm. getting some opinion. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's certainly popular. Sort of yeah. 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 It's a popular one. Yeah. yeah. So um, 
I don't know whether this is a bit of a um, you know unpopular opinion, but um, I think subject matter wise and as a whole, I think what I've read so far, um, it's effective. Um, it's got um, everything is sort of split up, and there's like um, illustrations, mm. and and it's it's very nice as a whole. Um, the strength of the poetry, though, um, I'm just, I, w I found myself to be, so far, a little bit underwhelmed. Um, a lot of it um, is very, um, it is a bit stream of consciousness. It is a bit, um, it, looking at pieces by themselves, if you didn't know the wider story or if you didn't know the wider, like, um, themes, you'd sort of um, maybe be a bit dismissive of, of some of the individual pieces. Um, there, are some, there are some great lines, um, but some of it just falls a little bit flat for me. Mm. Um, I will continue to read it because I do want to see um, after I finish like the whole, the whole suite of poems that um, whether it ties all together in a yeah. way that's, yeah. or does something surprising. Um, I think that's something that I'm I'm a bit um, wary of, especially with poetry, if um, what's being said is not being treated in a really fresh and new way. I think um, the subject matter, the fact that um, some of the trauma that, that um, the, the author or the protagonist has gone through um, is even being spoken about and that's you know adding to what's, what's not being mm. said yeah and and yeah. what adding to what's out there that's powerful enough so um, does all is it individual point point yeah or? so there's there's um like individual um like oh, yeah. chunks of things yeah. and then there yeah. is um like longer poems okay. um but uh is some of the is there, sorry is there a through line would you suggest mm. like yes. possibly more than a collection of poems it, it it's more like a prose poetry narrative yeah yes yep um so it's it's almost like the thread of the journey throughout it yeah. of, of healing and and um sort of uh when something has you know happened or or, or um, broken you sort of working your way out that uh, out of that so some of them read a little bit like um, what's happening is being worked through as it's being written. Um, and if you look at it from that perspective, um, I can see why people are like, you know, they, they get into um, the, the narrative throughout it and, and they can get on board that way. But so do all the poems have the same theme or does it? Uh, so it goes, so the chapters um, work through different parts of what has happened. So um, the hurting, the loving, the breaking, the healing, oh. like different stages of that um, journey. Um, and I think um, if uh, like some people who, you know, may have had something similar happen or have just not seen a voice like this or have not seen the subject matter treated like this, mm -hmm. it could be, you know, a very exciting book, but um, some of it is a little bit um, sort of conversational in a way that I sort of wanted something different so yeah, but I'll continue to read because I want to get a, a picture after I've read everything mm. yeah you might find that collectively it sort of comes yeah together. yeah and and paints it's hard when you're sort of halfway through and, and, and yeah you know, have you read the author before yeah. uh, no I haven't mm. um, but the a lot of hype for the book and it's been recommended by customers as well so okay. you know um, it's good to pick up something and go oh okay yeah. um, let's see if it lives up is, is it a YA book or is no, it no? No, this is this is um, poetry. Yeah. Poetry. So this is oh, in the okay. language. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so, so Gary, have you have you finished something recently? Yes, yes Kirsty, I have. I take my <laughs> That's life. a bit of a loaded <laughs> I take question. My I know. <laughs> seat out there. Um, yes, I have by chance. Um, so uh, the next one, this one, I completed uh, a while ago. Now I've had to refresh it recently just to refresh my memory. Uh, it's called Vox. Uh, it's by uh, Christine Doucher. It's the first novel. Um, Christine Doucher, she's a theoretical um, uh, linguist um, in America. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It's got so many good write-ups that I just had to pick it up and read it. I was really uh, 
I think the, the image on the front just really drew me. I don't know yeah. why. I just sort of yeah. saw it and thought, oh, <laughs> let's get this one. Um, so this this is set in a, um, a potential near future mm. in America, mm. and um, uh, when the, like the far right um, of politics and religion are um, taking hold, like the mm -hmm. Southern Bible Belt in America, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, has spread and um, it's spread to politics and um, um, women's rights mm -hmm. are being diminished slowly, mm -hmm. slowly, slowly, mm -hmm. um, and in a way that is not immediately perceptible to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And for those people that um, do know, you know, mm -hmm. it's sort of in the background, oh, it's just something going on, nothing really is going to happen. Um, yeah. And then, of course, uh, you know, the book starts in, in the middle of what's actually happening, which is um, women have lost their voice. Mm. Um, you know, not, not physically, but their, their rights, they have, to, um, they have to wear special bracelets that limit them to only speaking 100 words per day. Um, no. They have I to have. They have to <laughs> that's <laughs> tough. I felt. <laughs> Which would be tough for some some of us in the library service. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so women have to have um, spousal or parental um, permission, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in order to to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, they're not allowed to access their uh, mail. You know, the oh, husbands yeah. have got lock and key on the mail, mm -hmm. and. Yeah, I've just found it a really absorbing book. You know, watch this this woman who, Dr. Mac Jean McClelland, who is um, a scientist in the book. Um, she pretty much mirrors. Um, and so she can still be a scientist, even yeah. though she was a scientist. Uh, oh, Sorry, I should have said she was okay. a scientist. Yeah. Um, she deals with a special area of the brain where there's um, asphasia, mm -hmm. um, and once all these um, different um, uh, laws come in, then she's 50% of the workforce lose their jobs sort of overnight. The female 50%. Mm. Uh, the males have to take all the slack. Um, mm. The women become um, homemakers and mothers, mm -hmm. and um, and they yeah, and they lose their voice. Mm -hmm. um, and this story is about this. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, it seems want to stab someone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because and in a way, you can almost you know it's, you think okay. It's, in amazing, it's in impossible, but you know, mm -hmm. the way things can change overnight, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, so the, yeah, so this is this woman, she's a scientist and, um, and a mother of a daughter, she's also got three sons. And uh, in, her, in her oldest son, you see something like the, um, the Nazi youth party, you know, uh, the way the um, yeah. suddenly, suddenly the boys um, turn on their parents, you know, yeah. start dominating mm -hmm. their parents and bits yeah. and pieces. Mm. Similar sort of thing mm. you see working through this uh, uh, son, Stephen, and the mm. way he tra treats women and mm. starts talking to his mum. Mm. And um, so the story is about her mm -hmm. and um, how suddenly amidst all this that's going on, mm. suddenly something happens in the government. I won't mm -hmm. spoil yeah. it by what, telling you what. Yeah. Something happens in the government and suddenly the government need her. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She important. Suddenly she becomes important. She has a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. leeway about what she about mm -hmm. negotiation power, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> yeah, sure. And, and, and like uh, what what it says, a silence can be deafening. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. the tagline. That's yeah. And, and Vox, of course, is voice yeah. or you know yeah. the ability to switch on and off a voice. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so it it talks about her sudden involvement in the government and mm -hmm. how she then. Um, creates a downfall of the government. Oh. So, Spoiler um, alert. Uh, I think <laughs> it, 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 says that, it says that in the, in the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's a great read. Yeah. And, um, and for me, it was quite a refreshing read. Yeah. You know? it's, um, it's not science fiction. It's not mm. fantasy. Mm -hmm. It's just something that's on the so edge of potentially being real. You know? Or, you know. I, will, I will go like, make the comparison between that and sort of similar things that happen in The Handmaid's Tale. Mm -hmm. um, is there a, a um, something, so in The hands, Handmaid's Tale there's something specific that happens that causes this whole um, shift of the removal of um, women's rights in that, you know, people's, the generations start becoming barren and they need women as, as breeders. 
and it starts sort of the ball rolling there. Is it is it tied to anything specific or is it just a, it's, it's just tied, a change of it's power? It's tied to religion really, mm -hmm. the Christian far right mm -hmm. and their, their belief that women should be the homemakers, okay. they shouldn't have such a strong voice in society mm -hmm. and giving these bright, having wearing yeah. these bracelets they find slowly lose their the, voice. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's, there's one point in it um, where the daughter comes home from school and she's won a prize mm. because she was the one that day that spoke the least amount of words. Wow. Oh, you know, and rough. she's that's finding that's it. And it's, yeah, it's a very, yeah. and you think, yeah. wow, if that was happening really, what would I do as a husband? What, you know, a, yeah, what would yeah. I do yeah. as a woman? Sobering you know, thought. Yeah. Um, so, totally recommend it. So that Excellent. one's Vox by Chris, Christina Delcher. And, and Anu, yeah. um, I think we're running out of time a bit, but we'll you see. What, what have you yeah. read recently? So this, this book, The Thing About Jellyfish by Ali Benjamin, this is the one that I read recently. And this book has, is a big surprise to me, not, not just because of its content, but because I chose to read it, because it's a, a kids' fiction, a junior fiction. Uh, it, it has been decades since I read a junior fiction, but I really, really love this book. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's an amazing book. My uh, my daughter, uh, twelve year old, she she recommended this book to me. I just flipped through the pages and and you know I, I fell in love with the book instantly. So this book and I couldn't put it down. I finished this in a day. It's mm. it's such a great book, yes. mm -hmm. and yeah. yeah, it talks about grief and loss and you know how a twelve year old girl gets over, uh, you know, uh, like uh, come to terms with the fact that her best friend died. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time her best friend, like the last time she saw her best friend, they did not part in good terms. So uh. that guilt is there mm -hmm. in her. And uh, so she internalizes the grief. And uh, in, in, in it, there is a line that says, everybody grieves in uh, different ways. Mm -hmm. And the way this girl, Susie Swanson, she uh, she chose um, is not to speak to anyone. She stopped talking to everyone, mm. and she is a girl like who is fascinated by science, and she wants a scientific explanation to everything. Mm. So she couldn't accept the fact that her friend Franny died drowning, because mm. in her mind Franny is a great swimmer and she can't drown. Ah, okay. Yeah. So she tries to find uh, find a scientific explanation for that, and the whole book, uh, like the half of the book, is like a quest. Um, uh, to you know to yeah. find out like w what caused the death and then she stumbles upon like one day it's like an epiphany she a revelation to her and she uh, she was researching something in the internet and then she found that many um, deaths that are deemed as uh, you know drowning deaths mm -hmm. are actually caused by jellyfish stings uh, yeah so it's it's a very That's sweet way of a girl yeah. you know trying to um, find some logic in yeah. what happened mm. and throughout the book she's questioning um, not why Franny died but how did Franny die yeah. mm. so uh, but at the end she realizes that you know whatever way she died it, it's a big loss and mm. she she comes out of the grief you know step by step um, and it, it was such a refreshing read and you get to see uh, the world from the point of view of a 12 year old mm. and it apart from dealing with grief this book also deals with um, other issues that middle schoolers go yeah. through yeah like you know the need to fit in mm. uh, bullying and you mm. know coming of age and mm. so many things and the 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 main character Susie is a girl who doesn't fit in with the rest of the tribe mm. you know yeah. so she she is always interested in science she's not interested in uh, makeup or boys or mm. anything and this book celebrates the fact that it is okay to be different you know you, mm -hmm. you should be comfortable in your own skin and I feel that um, uh, I feel that you know if uh, those kids uh, I, this is a good read for kids aged about 10 definitely mm -hmm. and for those kids who feel that you know they are different in some sort mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they would find a lot of relief uh, in reading this book because there are like lots of kids who are like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and uh, who are smart and um, you know that that's how the yeah. world is you know yeah. everybody doesn't fit into the uh, you know the same mold or you know that's a good yeah. recommendation. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Yeah. It is a fantastic I've, read. I've read it as well. It's, oh, okay. it's really, yeah. really quite brilliant. It's, it's a powerful, it's emotional. It is, uh, what to say, it's deep. 
Yeah. 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 I didn't so expect like it. with light moments of yeah, humor. Yeah, light moments as, of humor as, as well. well. Yeah. So it's, it's it's not depressing. It's not yeah. depressing at all. And yeah. I'll read that after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> it it is good for, for you know parents who who love to read with kids. You know they can have yeah. a conversation about it mm. so because yeah. so many topics are being addressed and nothing is like uh, nothing feels like you know it's it's put there for a purpose. Yeah. It yeah. is integrated well. It all it's it's seamlessly yeah. interwoven together. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's a beautiful book. I recommend this to everyone, who, you know, <laughs> even to adults yes. who love yeah. everyone. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful book. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And, and just quickly. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can do mine quick if we're, we're around. So um, I saw a lot of the um, posters for The Darkest Mind. Um, this is a YA book by Alexandra Bracken. Um, I saw a lot of the posters um, about it getting turned into a movie, which um, makes me want to read the book first <laughs> rather than yeah, see yeah, the movie yeah. first. Um, just quickly, it's a, a dystopian YA. Um, so there is an inciting incident where um, uh, the teens or, or the young people um, in the world um, develop this sickness and um, most of them die, but the ones that survive, um, sur survive and have uh, are changed and have um, certain levels of powers and it's about how um, authorities deal with uh, young people that are um, suddenly potentially more powerful than you know anything and mm -hmm. it's a good sort of um, look at that. Um, having said that, um, I found it a little bit slow. Um, Especially, I don't know whether um, any of you read The Hunger Games. After reading The Hunger Games, yeah. it sort of, for me, that set a new level of um, pacing and dealing with um, dystopian okay. themes. Mm. Um, and since it's been a kind of hard to have anything live mm -hmm. up to that, yeah. um, so. Is this part of a trilogy? Like yeah, a this series? is part of a yeah. series, and okay. I think the rest of the series has been optioned for. Um, uh, a movie, so um, I think I'll see the movie and see if see what they do with the movie. Yes. Um, see how faithful it remains to the book. I'd be yeah. interested in to to see um, like anyone watching whether they've read both the Hunger Games and this, or um, whether anyone has any sort of opinions as to whether it's worth reading the second book. <laughs> whether it's yeah. you know, do I stick it out or do I just you know pop it on the shelf? But that's the Darkest Minds. Are the yeah. pictures of the other books at the back? The uh, yes. yes, and we've got these in the library as well. Oh, so. cool. Excellent. Yeah. Mm. All right, so maybe just a, a quick, quick two-sentence two <laughs> uh, <laughs> about, <laughs> about the book you're looking forward to reading. Okay. okay, so I'm looking forward to reading this book. It's called The Wall. It's by John Lancaster, a British author. Um, the reason I picked this one up was because um, I love Philip Pullman author of Northern Lights or Golden Compass uh, and on the back it says the wall is something new and um, almost an allegory almost a dystopian future warning partly an elegant study of the nature of storytelling itself well that sold me um, <laughs> I was hugely impressed by it so it takes place on a wall um, which is a 10,000 kilometer long coastal wall um, very little the book itself in the fly leaf it tells you very little about uh, the wall what its okay. purpose is uh, we just know that the people that are on the wall are defenders the people on the other side of the wall are the others okay um, there's 300 uh, was it 300,000 people on the wall itself or um, 200,000 on the wall in shifts and another hundred that back the wall up you know um, and and yeah it's, it's very much the, the people on the wall are on there on 12 hour shifts. It's very cold. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of fear. Mm. And there's a lot of time to think. And the, and the narrative of the story is a bit like that. It's, you know, it, it stretches out ideas. Um, mm. as, you know, as if you're on there and you've got lots of time to think about the, the small mm. things that are going on, the, what could happen, you know, the fear, oh, the cold. You know. And so it's an interesting narrative. Um, but I picked it up because of Pullman's uh, little blurb mm. at the back. I mm. love Pullman, nice. and I think anything that he recommends is, is fine <laughs> by me. Yeah, our <laughs> recommendation. Yeah. Okay. And the one I'm going to read is and uh, uh, listen to is another mm. audio book. It's 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 written here. It's a popular book. It's two week long only. <laughs> very very <laughs> popular book. <laughs> it's uh, becoming by Michelle Obama. Um, I think she is a very influential and iconic lady yep. of a century. 
and I would love to hear about her journey from a normal house to one of the fam most famous address in the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah her, and um, I would like to read about her struggles and uh, you know what makes her such a smart, independent mm. woman and yet humble at the same time. Yeah. And I feel this is read by the author. That's what yeah. I'm ah, really you know, so oh, you're that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. yeah, and I had uh, um, I had read uh, I had listened to Barack Obama's uh, Dreams from My Father. It's also mm. an autobiographical memoir by him. Like I I got only halfway through it, then I had to return it. So <laughs> I, have, I plan to read it sometime <laughs> later in the future. <laughs> yeah. But it was so nice to hear uh, Barack Obama speaking about his life. Mm. At, and I think I will have the same uh, experience when I listen to this because it's Michelle Obama who's mm. uh, doing the narration. So now you're going to have Excellent. to drive home slowly <laughs> <laughs> to, to listen to that in two yeah. weeks. Well, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's also just broken or just about to break like a lot of the, yeah, the records seller. for yeah, yeah. yeah biographical for the amount yeah. sold yeah oh. amount sold. yeah oh, well, it's, okay. it's it's a bestseller yeah. Yeah. yeah it's hugely popular it's not surprising mm. I guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right yeah. just light, lightning recommendation <laughs> lightning <laughs> recommendation <laughs> is, um, Sorry, Louise O'Neill <laughs> the surface breaks it's a reimagining feminist reimagining of um, the Little Mermaid uh, more in line oh. with the hand, uh, Christian Anderson, Anderson yeah. mm -hmm. Little Mermaid than definitely not Disney. This is not Disney, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's a YA um, fiction, um, and it actually has. I, I picked it up because I love retellings, but I also picked it up because it says contains adult themes and are unsuitable for some younger readers. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it'll go in that dark. Yeah, yeah, sort of more oh. tragic yeah. fairy yeah. tale rather than the sort of lighter fairy tale yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm really interested to see whether this one's got mixed reviews I'm really interested to see whether you know it hits the mark or it's you know it's sort of not quite there mm -hmm. so those older for this ones one. are more the interesting fans. because they are darker like yeah. the Grimm's brothers yeah. you know, yeah. so it explores a yeah. lot more have you ever mm. seen that warning on a book before I haven't actually seen anything like that before, mm -hmm. so I'm really interested oh, that right. that yeah. they've um, and what it's is the dark theme there. Yeah. So the the original story is very very dark and very tragic, mm -hmm. um, but this explores um, the lives of the female characters, mm -hmm. including um, Ursula, the sea witch, and things like that, and and all the emotional complexity behind some of these characters. Mm. So I'd be really interested to see whether it hits the mark. Oh, I look forward to hearing mm. what you Excellent. have to say. Yeah, yeah. and is it a new author? Or? Um, not as far as I know. She mm. has done several others. Oh, okay. um, but I haven't read those either, so it might yeah. be something that, you know, yeah. gets such a great cover those. too. Yes, yes. 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 it covers half nice. of it. Yeah. There's so many good illustration covers mm. in YA and junior mm. fiction. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm just going to quickly check if any of you have sent through any questions or comments for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll just be a moment. Talk amongst yourself. Oh, talk amongst yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can put that one on hold for me as well. Yeah. So, well, you, you have to read like you wanted this as well. The thing about Yeah, Jersey. So this happened last time. <laughs> I, I ended up with a couple of books I wanted to read. Okay. But that one sounds really good as well because yeah, I, I yeah, like yeah, the I darker would also fairy love stories. To read that. There's actually there's quite a lot in the collection at the moment of the, the retellings mm -hmm. of Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella. They're more um, interesting, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, and they really seem to dig at the heart of the original tales more yeah. than okay. the Disney. Yeah. Mm. I, I have one question for, for Gary. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary, you, you mentioned Delcher's, Delcher's? Yep. book, Vox. Do you think Delcher wrote this novel? Why do you think Delcher wrote this novel at this point in time? Ooh, mm. good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess you can see, I wouldn't say parallels, but um, there are certainly certain things going on in America right now. So she's, a, she's an American author. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, she mentions the wall between uh, Mexico and the US, you know, that exists in this novel. So you can't you can't cross the border and just get out of there now. Mm -hmm. if, you know, if you hadn't have got out of America beforehand, before all these new uh, laws came in, you know, then you can't because your, your passport's taken away from you as a female. Mm -hmm. Only the men have passports. Oh, oh wow. Okay, um, thank you. And so um, I don't know with with the wall and um, you know the anti. Um, anti-foreigners, you know, those sorts of policies that you hear a lot about, not just in America, but around the world, you know, 
this sort of far right um, mm. extremism. Mm. Um, it's ha is it happening in the present? Like, what does when is it happening? This too. Um, well, it's it's not disclosed. I mean, oh, it, okay. it is it is America, you know, and it, it just sort of s starts in the middle of the story. The time, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's no specific time frame mm -hmm. involved, okay. but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think there are parallels with um, with the, the increasing voice of the people on the right of society who, yeah. who are demanding we close our borders, um, yeah. you know, certain and you know and women's rights. Women are still fighting for their rights, aren't they? You mm -hmm. know, yeah. so it has that and yeah. um, yeah. different cultures are still fighting for their rights. Yeah. You know, and one part of this book was you know once once women lose all their rights, who next? Mm. You know, is it the you know the the minor cultures in society then suddenly they they lose their voice and then suddenly yeah. you just got Everyone's white men. Everyone's on 100 words yeah. a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes I think it's got a, a lot there's a lot of um, lot going on that parallels mm -hmm. what could potentially go on in the future you know mm -hmm. if we don't start voting with our yeah w you know yeah. using our votes Pay and, attention. and speaking yeah. out. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Yeah. Excellent well thanks for that and thank you for submitting your your question. Mm. Uh, and for joining us for Live with the Librarians. Uh, we had a good time. Mm, I hope, yeah. I hope yeah, you did as well. <laughs> and uh, we'll have a book list up probably next week for you, you to have a look at from what we've mentioned here tonight. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs>